It's season five. Moshi Moshi Podcast. This I'm Zach here with Lincoln. <laughs> Just false say the Lincoln now. Um, yeah. So Brand new year. New year, 2022, which always sounds weird because it sounds like we're saying 2020 and then two on new it. But no, we're not. We're hopefully not getting a repeat. <laughs> It's a whole lot of twos. 2022 to 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. So, much, so much repeats. I'm, I'm still waiting for jazz to come out of nowhere, but that apparently it's not happening. Wait, jazz? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, well, because you remember, like, before 2020, we were like, oh, we're going to bring, like, people were like, oh, it's going to be, like, how the 20s was before. Like, everyone's going to, like, wearing suits and shit. Like, that was, like, we're going to bring that back. Which was weird because... That whole movement of like swing, what was it called? It's not it's called swing. Um, what's that music called? Oh fuck, I can't remember now. Uh, the like, one, big, like the techno version. Like there were, it, it's it's from it's the same like genre that. Um, Jesus, the <laughs> what is this even? Uh, Car- Two hours later, I've got it. <laughs> okay, you remember Caravan uh, Palace? Yes, yeah. That I think it music. is swing. Yeah, it's swing music. Oh god, because <laughs> my friend was like, oh, "What the? F-? Yeah, but that, like that came out like a year or two before 2020, and then by the time 2020 came out, I'm like, this is not even like that popular of a genre anymore. <laughs> We're still waiting on. <laughs> we were ahead of our time. We, we were we were Smash Mouth apparently, <laughs> uh, but so so far with this year, um, okay, so far <laughs> like just holding on to like waiting for March to be like oh god please nothing more <laughs> I can't do this again, um, uh, but you had a very eventful New Year's, seeing how we couldn't do it. Normally, a New Year's special because somebody had a life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I underestimated the the amount of time I would be spending in Dallas, and definitely did not have time to record. Uh, yeah, so for the for New Year's, my sister in law won a contest to get tickets to the Dallas Cowboys. Now. I'm not a Cowboys fan at all, but, you know, it's an experience and it's a family trip. And I would love to see, you know, we got to be in a, you know, in a suite. So we had, you know, free food and drinks and, you know, you're, you know, sure, you're up there. You know, you're not like on the sideline, 50 yard line, you know, view, but like, it's still great. It's still a great view, huge stadium. The Cowboys, you know, did a great job of, you know, they brought us on a stadium tour. They you know, feel it was it was a cool experience. But before that, we you know we decided to go early ourselves because the Cowboys they arrange travel. So you know we told them, hey, these are the days that we're going to fly out. And they said, you know, if, if you fly out the day, we'll fly you out the day of the game, and then fly you back the day after. But we're like, well, we want to check out Dallas before that. So we told them to fly us out a few days earlier mm-hmm. and paid for our own hotels for that time. But we got to, you know, we got to get a really good feeling for how Dallas the city is because the, the football stadium is like 40 minutes away. It's out, way outside. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, so the city of Dallas is really cool. I, I liked it, spending time with my family. Even on New Year's, you know, we got to see fireworks uh outside there was covid restrictions i guess so they had a specific area for us to go to but it was totally fine i mean and and we wore we wore our masks the whole way i mean i'm fully vaccinated have a booster so oh look at you with your booster showing off i wasn't i wasn't as concerned really and i mean so far i haven't heard of anybody in our group Getting COVID, so that that's a miracle. <laughs> well, that's, 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 was that's the whole the point fun. of the vaccine, dude. Get that immune system up. Get like well, that and also the six feet, which 
Again, as I've stated a million times, I'm always afraid <laughs> now to get sick. It's been two whole years. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, overall, I mean, it was... I thought it was a really good experience. and I would totally... I would go back to Dallas again. Definitely. To see them cowboys. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> well... Well, while while I was doing that, explain how your New Year's finally got your hands on something that you've been trying to for like two years straight. Well, okay, trying to like, well, I I, I wouldn't say I was stressing on it, but like it was hard. I, I finally I finally got my PS Five, especially because they did it the right way on GameStop. Finally. Instead of like, hey, we're going to release these online where easily people can just be a box and easily can just scalp the shit out of it. Because I still, like, being a Power um, uh, Powers Award member, there was a whole thing where it's like, okay, you go online, the day of or whatever, they're going to have it released at a certain time. And then they would release it online and it was unavailable from the date, from the moment it was unreleased. It was unavailable. I was like, are you fucking kidding? So you just have to refresh for like 40 whole minutes. Then I got all the way to like where you, I could put my credit card information and then just kicked me out. And it was like unavailable. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> like I was so pissed that one time. But it, it's it's been like a hassle to get the PS5. And realized that it wasn't like, it wasn't. It wasn't a whole thing of like like what Nintendo does, where it's like we're only gonna release like twenty five units of something, and then wonder why no one has it. And I'm like, yeah, because you don't release enough. Why do you do this? Like, I I, I hear with the PS five, and also I think even the Xbox, there's like a certain chip or something in them that became like scarce because of COVID. So it's just been just hard to to release these things. But the way they were releasing it, and the the re, the people were having scalpers, and you would be seeing the, the, okay, the PS Five is a it's five hundred bucks, barely five hundred bucks for the console. You would see people have that shit on like Best Buy or Walmart, like online. The minimum I've ever seen is a thousand, and then even Zach was telling me before, like like. You were telling me like what a thousand five hundred for a freaking controller and a backpack? Ooh, <laughs> right. the Menandry. Exactly. Like what a deal! Like oh, you get a backpack, put your PS Five in, and an extra controller. You be do. <laughs> you can't play it. No, and it was it, and it's so stupid because I even saw when they were releasing like the covers and stuff. Like they were having like the covers of the the official ones because they've been having the covers for PS Five for years because people been doing their little things and then Sony was like no fuck you not only do we make we make official ones no one else can sell plates without it being like slightly illegal so so that was the whole thing like oh yeah cool you guys are releasing plates where the fuck's the console for us to play this and but they did finally it's like GameScop's like hey we're gonna release some like things like maybe in your area so I called them up, like, legit as I saw the email. I was like, called them up. Oh, is, is this happening? Is this happening in my GameStop? And they're like, yeah, we got 20 calls ready. Of course it's happening here. And I'm like, okay, bet. I'll be there tomorrow. I I, <laughs> I tell our friends on Discord, I'm not going to use their names. Well, actually, would they even be able to find people? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take the risk. I'm not using names. <laughs> but... <laughs> um. And it was like, oh, yeah, like, you probably should be there, like, from the time that it was released, like, or the information was released, which was 4 o'clock that day. And I'm like, I'm not staying in any line for GameStop at 4 o'clock. I'm like, I'm not doing no line. If I don't get it, I don't get it. And that was all it was. And, like, that was how I was like, if I don't get it, I don't get it. That That's cool and all. But... As I'm as I'm going, <laughs> this is so stupid. Like as I'm like, I'm not gonna go there that early. I'm I went at like eight. The thing like the place opens at ten. So I see I'm like I'm driving in. I see a line, whatever, and I'm like, oh no, I'm good. I still get it, of course. And it was actually a good deal because not only do you okay, so you got the PS5, 
You get your controller with it and everything. Just the console. You get three games, which the three games were games I wanted to get. Because there have been other bundles where they're like, oh, Far Cry 6. Have no problem with Far Cry. Like, as a friend, I've never played a Far Cry. And I'm not, like, heavily into the franchise. So I was like, I don't care. But um, yeah. the ones that I, that came with the bundle was the, the Samurai game, which was amazing. Ghosts of Toshiba? Uh, wait, I have it. <laughs> it's not Toshiba, because that's a fucking PC, PC game. <laughs> that's a PC development. Um, it comes with Ghosts of Tsushima. Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima? Tsushima. Yes, I forget the T's are never fucking pronounced. Japanese 101. <laughs> it goes with an S. Uh, Smile, uh, Spider-Man, M- Miles Morales, and Ratchet and Clank. Rift apart, which, which is funny because it was like you're gonna get a, a, a E rated game, a T rated game, and a mature rated game. Those are the three that came with it, like something for everyone apparently. And you get another controller, which did like I thought it was like, oh, we're gonna give you a, another controller that's like off brand control. No, it's the fucking other PS5 controller. I was like, oh, that's awesome, and a, a control. Um, a charger base for both of the controllers. And that was like eight hundred to nine hundred dollars including tax. All that came into that bundle. So I'm like, hell fuck yeah, this <laughs> like that was very compared to I get a controller, the console, and a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> for fifty You got you got at least gotta deal with it and you got some games to play because trust me, it ain't taking you a day to play through Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> and Rift Apart, you know what I mean? Yeah, like and they're like and it's good games and it also I still have all the PS but it's it's nice like they're going to and I remember like even the day afterwards I got another email was like, Oh, we still have PS five. I don't know if they really did in my place, but they they still had PS fives that they're trying to release and I think Sony's trying to push more out there so people can actually have the fucking console that's been doing amazing for a whole year or something, they say like, "Yeah, our console's selling." I'm like, to whom? <laughs> to whom it does it sell? Like this is. <laughs> but eh, so far, like, because I still have to play, <laughs> I still have to finish Persona Five, so I will have to have like some update of like what the PS Five games actually look on, like on a PS Five. Because I'm playing a PS Four game, it looks nice, but of course, <laughs> like. It's to be expected that an old game on a new system should look better than what it did on the old system. <laughs> That'd be horrible if it was like, it only plays this, and if you try any older, it will crash and burn. Well, it technically works. PS5 works. or die. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a good thing, Like, which was funny. What about PS5 thought they were going to be so good with the releases that it never made it backwards compatible? <laughs> We were like, fuck, dude. Because <laughs> PS4, like, I don't even think the run is over yet. Because I still see games get released for the PS4. Well, I think that part of that mean. is because they know they know that the PS5 really been widely... Like, there's a lot of people that just don't have it. So, like, we're still in that transitional period because mm-hmm. it just feels like no one has one. So, it's like, why, why would we fully switch over when so many people still have PS4. But the problem is a lot of the PS4 games that are like PS4 and PS5, the PS4 version is just horrible because like you didn't... Well, okay, that's just one example that was Cyberpunk. But, but it was a very good example. Just like... So you made the PS5 version, it was okay. PC is okay. PS4 trash. Yeah, <laughs> like the trash is just like mold into somebody. Somebody just turns into clay out of nowhere in the middle of talking to them like, yeah, I can't. I can't be doing this. <laughs> like, it's just not a thing. Um, but I don't know how I'm going to have a transition of this. But <laughs> Well, actually, no. No, I did get the PS5, but somehow I like wanted to finish a PC game. I finally finished Ruin King. Um, Now a lack of trying. Which, it was, it, it was, oh, for people who don't know, uh, Rune King is a League of Legends game. 
Because for some odd reason, out of the ten fucking years that Riot Games has been called Riot Fucking Games, they only had one thing was League of Legends. And now they're just like, oh yeah, we're going to actually release other games. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, um, they had Rune King come out uh, about the Rune King, which is another fucking character that was like, I remember... Like two years in, there's a fucking item in League of Legends. It's called Blade of the Rune King. And we're only hearing about his lore now. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Well, and it's, that's the thing. It's like a problem with why they had to release games of lore. Because how much lore can you get from an MMO? Like, they can't, you're just doing fights. They can't really be like, well, they're not lore dumping as they walk. Down to fighting, You're like no, it's, it's just simple thing. Like here's a character, they they come from this region. Cool, if you want to look into it, you could read books. <laughs> just tons of fucking passages. Like oh god, this is cool. <laughs> Technically, like how Warhammer is, where like Warhammer has a ton of fucking lore to it. You have to read a book. <laughs> like you're not getting it from the top. Like the game, what the fuck. The game right. whatever you make of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like Rune King... And it was... So, not going too into like the, the, the story. The gameplay is very different. Are different from what people... Because it was like... It's a turn-based game. That's the gameplay. It's like, oh, you're an RPG. you turn-based. And when I say RPG, this is like legit RPG. Because you level up. You have different stats that you can go off of. You have different items and different equipment that you equip. You don't really see... You only see the difference when you have a weapon. You only see those differences. You don't really see the differences like when you put on different armor. Your character just kind of looks the same in the overworld, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just I'm just happy you look... You have some kind of change. But also, like, it's an RPG, so you're leveling up and... A cool thing about it was, like, there are characters in the game, like, Pike is a character, he's the Blood, um, uh, Blood, uh, Horde Ripper, is that his name? I even forgot what, how they say it. Pretty much he's an assassin and a build, and builds water, which build water, just, if pirates could just have one island for themselves, just imagine that. That's what build water is. Legit, just like, here's a territory ruled by pirates. <laughs> like, if they somehow just had an area for themselves, build one. So, like, he, he, ha he, uh, Pike is this character, like, his assassin kills off people, he's a skirmisher. But, if, in the game, you could make him kind of a crit, like, he, he could do crits, he could do ambushing, he could not really be too much of a tank, but you can get there, you can get pretty close, which is very odd for an assassin, but, Hey, it's your character. Play it the way you want to play it. You can make, like, Alawi wishes this, like... Oh, God, I can't even explain these, these characters because it's kind of weird. Um, well, actually, no. There's only that one part. Uh, think about, like, if Wonder Woman actually was buff. <laughs> like, pretty much what Alawi... Like, buff and slightly darker <laughs> of skin. Um... But that's a, like Alawi could be a bruiser, or you could just make her a tank like I did, where my health at the end of the game was a thousand and seven hundred points of health. I'm just like, nope, I don't want to feel anything. <laughs> I want to constantly be up while they're doing horrible attacks on my team. Like, <laughs> just you can do that, and like, there's like six characters and everything. The gameplay is pretty solid, and and different in how yes, it's turn based. But you had lanes, so you can. It's like you almost set up your how the action or how the cinematic, not cinematic, sorry, how the whole patterns of your actions are gonna go. Because if you want to put yourself like you could put yourself in the speed lane, you could sometimes do two attacks in one turn. Like, so it's not it's not like the it's not like frame by frame. Oh, okay, I'm gonna just wait. I'm I'm gonna hit you. Okay, wait for my turn. And then I come back to hit you. It's like, no, you could have it set up like passives. You have instances. You have ultimates. Sometimes have very quick recovery time. So, 
you have to just set yourself up of pushbacks and all these other things that you can do. And everyone has different like skills and, and, and abilities and ways that they're important to parts of... E- even when it's not like story-based forcing you to play the game. Characters, I played every single one of the fucking six characters. Like, it was just going to happen. I, of course, had my favorites. Um, but I didn't ever feel like anyone was not supposed to be there. Which is a very odd statement because in the story... There was a part like I've seen I've seen trailers of Ruin King, and <laughs> I get I, I get like Alawi and I get Misfortune, and I even get like um, Pike. They're all part of Bilgewater. That's their fucking home. I get them being there, <laughs> but when I saw like fucking like uh, oh not a color, what a guy, uh, Ari, which is an Ionian fucking Yasuo, which is like this wandering samurai kind of thing. And and Brom, which is a fucking from the Fair Lord, which is just this ice kingdom. Well, ice wasteland is the best way of saying it. But like a place where he's fun because Brom is supposed to be like this. Like, hmm. Okay, you remember um, you remember Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist? Yes. Pretty much that. <laughs> just like this very joyfully like strong harm man uh always had adventures and stories talked about him and stuff like that that you get that from just being that and it's just a weird like you're like okay how are all these guys going to work together and talk and are they even really going to have conversations not only do they do like i i i felt the relationships like made sense and no one felt like Oh, they just added this person in there. Because they made them feel like they were supposed to be there. And they had different plots to them. And also the converse... I, <laughs> this is something like in Tales of Symphonia where like... I I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> but I've always loved rest conversations. Or like any time when the characters talk to each other. Because then you're like, oh, okay. It's not just people going on adventures and just walking in silence. They actually have to have like, oh, we're gonna say words. We're gonna we're gonna speak on this like kind of shit. And the rest conversations, they did that. Like, I could I could know that people were like how they react. Like, Yasuo was kind of annoyed by Brom because Yasuo was like this kind of like, I want to be by myself kind of person. Like he's a wanderer. He's he's a he's a happier version of Wolverine. Let's just go with that. <laughs> like, like that kind of personality. And then you have Brom, who is just like this boastful, like, ha ha, come and hug like that kind of guy. And you're like, yeah, those are not going to mix. <laughs> so then you, and you see, and you're like, oh, I like, I like how that was played in. And like how the struggles come into things. And other, other characters of the, like the league um, lore comes into play. Of course, they had to deal with Shadow Isles or, Bilgewater, which, if you don't know about Lee, don't know what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> but, and that's the thing, too. Um, with Ruin King, do not be afraid because it is a League story. Like, yes, you, there will be references for diehard fans, just like in everything. Like, if you ever watch Marvel movies and stuff like that, of course, it's very, it's very um, accessible to everybody. Like, you could never have seen anything of Marvel or read or done the comics, which who the fuck are you? <laughs> but, like, like, but, it, but it can happen. And you can still watch MCU and enjoy it for the movies that they they have for you. But of course, if you are a person who is way into the comics, there will be Easter eggs and references for just you. And the same thing with Ruin King. Like, if you, if you know about League, if you know about these characters... They you're they play very good homage to what's happening and to like all these secrets being revealed and all these things for for the person who die hard into these lore, but it's still accessible to the people who like don't know shit about League. On the fact that League is a very toxic community, <laughs> like League of Legends is toxic as fuck. I'll say, it. but like it's still accessible to the people who don't know anything about the lore, and it's still like. I don't want to say baby you the people, but it still helps you along. So you don't have to be like, oh, I needed to know like 20 years of fucking history just to play a fucking game. Like, it literally 
hands you into the story. Also, I didn't even know there technically is a story mode of the game. So if you do not want to play the gameplay at all and just want to explore and just do the lore bits, you can do that. I never, I, like, apparently I just went into the game and was like, normal, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> I didn't know there was a lore <laughs> one. <laughs> what, what, well, I wouldn't have played it anyway because I, I, I play games to play a game. Yes, the story has to be good because if it's not, then what the fuck is my, what I'm striving for? But at the same time, if the gameplay sucks, I can't even get through the law. <laughs> You're just like, this sucks ass. Which, none of it really does suck in, in a way. Like, the only, okay, the only gripes I did have with Ruin King was sometimes the pathing could go weird. Probably just because I'm a mouse and I had to click things a little bit too much because you would get caught and stuff. But you never, you never pinged into, like, stuff. That would have been horrible if you just, like, strived into a wall it's like and now i'm stuck in this wall nothing was that crazy but there was kind of some issues in that and i would have liked to see a little bit more like fun done with the ultimates because after a while especially when you get later into the game you use those ultimates like every fucking battle at least twice or three times so you're gonna see them a lot so the fact that it was just like, they're doing their ultimate. They stand in one position and then make some like little like, and it's not like, oh, okay, you see like this animation and things are like in the background. No, it's just a green background and this character just like lightning and the slice. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, but that could have been one of those things where we're like, we need to just release it. Fuck it. <laughs> Because Ruin yeah, King like was supposed to come out like... Oh, sorry, what did you say? I said, yeah, just get it out. <laughs> well, it was supposed to come out like two months ago, or before it got released. Actually, I think it was like three months before. Because there was a whole League thing where they were talking about the Ruin King. And they had the Sentinels, which didn't do apparently do well in League, because people didn't like it. Um, but, like, that Ruin King was supposed to come out before it, because it explains certain things in the Sentinel thing. But they released the Sentinel event because they were kind of just rushed into it. And then Ruin King came out. Which, to be honest, I liked the fr- Like, probably was a better idea that they did that because Ruin King was such a good narrative. And, like, I felt things from these characters. And, and I did like the, like, any any time they showed any other character aside from the six, that was like, oh, that's, that's cool to see these characters and know. Like, <laughs> there was a part... Where I, I, I was in the Shadow Isles, which is, like, supposed to be, like, this land of dead, pretty much, if you haven't gotten from the shadows. Um, and wraiths and shit like that. So, I was there for a while, just walking by. I just saw this, this, like, stuffed animal, oh, not stuffed animal, stuff a doll? It's not even stuff, it's just a doll. Sorry. I saw this doll, I'm like, huh, I know what that is. <laughs> was weird because i think the doll was there the whole fucking time and it was only because i was randomly walking around like later on in the shadow house like because there's a part where you had to return back to the shadow house and i was just like oh shit that's that cared <laughs> like, like, like i did i didn't know it was there <laughs> but hey shit that happens but yeah there was good the story the story the gameplay i would recommend it even for people who do not play league Especially people who have ever, like, gone through the turn-based gameplay and can deal with it. I would say. If, you, if you're if you into the action, like, if you were way into the action-style gameplay and you can't do any, even any version of turn-based, might not be your, your, your thing. But you still could do a story mode if you want to do that. Like, it's still there. Because the story, to me, is worth it. Like, the game was very good... It was a good chunk of 40 hours, so it's a it's a good amount of RPG. It's not like 15 minutes, or 15 minutes, 15 hours or anything. It's it's an RPG for us. <laughs> it's not a JRPG where it's like 200 hours. You're like, I haven't even scratched the surface of what this. Because I'm playing, like I said, I'm playing Persona Five. I'm 110, like 110. <laughs> God, it feels so bad. 110 whole like hours into it, and I'm still like, I'm not, I'm not done with this. It's not. 
<laughs> Holy shit, what how how much time does it take to like go through high school and then how do you live life after that? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> but like it was forty hours, good chunk of it. Um I I can't wait to see if they if like especially that company that's working on it because it's not only League League like outsource to get other people to play or to make their games for the story. I want I would love to see another story made in that same way or even different events or different like because there's different regions with rich ass fucking story and like shit that happened to them. So I would love to know or see a little bit. Same thing with like Arcane that came out a little bit. Like because everyone was fucking like oh, oh about Arcane. Which again, it's a good it's a good show. I'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> Netflix made it wonders. It's a good show but it's not oh good. No, it's it, it's still like but no. It, you okay, you know how when you like something and it's like you love it and then people like like started liking it because now it's the it's the it's the in thing and you're like but I liked it when it was underground fuck technically it's what happened to us when we liked anime and now everyone loves anime and you're like no 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 I like this when I was a, a geek fuck you I remember being this <laughs> <laughs> well you're watching cartoons aren't you like 12 these are for babies I don't think you watch the anime I watch because I've seen people die <laughs> This ain't for no children. <laughs> like, like, hell, there's a scene in Naruto where he break, where Sasuke breaks a person's. Wait, I don't even think it was break. I think he dissev- like severed the person's back. Like, I think that was a part of the fucking. Sh- I was like, oh my god, <laughs> for children. <laughs> or it's like a, it's like assassination classroom, which on the surface. If you if you saw it out of context, you'd be like, "Oh, that's yeah, it's just a cartoon. It looks like a kids thing. It's a shonen jump, but like, it's not. <laughs> like if you, if you if you read it or watch it, it's definitely not for kids. <laughs> so. Definitely not for kids. And um, and like that's the whole thing. Like I, also, I, which was weird because that was a thing with Ruin King, um, playing it is I. I never realized how much it's weird to play RPGs and then play, like, Ruin King and then, like, oh, oh, yeah, they're adults, thank God. Because so much RPGs are, like, kids doing things that kids definitely can't do because the adults are bad people. And you're like, why would I have to play as a child? <laughs> so many RPGs are like that. Especially JRPGs. Like, normally you're 12. <laughs> like, you're like... Fuck, bro. But dealing with like adult things, like because there's there's a part in Ruin King where I don't even know how they did this because it was like a conversation between Brom and Alawi, and Alawi was clearly putting up hints of like we could have sex now. Like that's a thing that could. I was like, whoa! <laughs> I was just playing it, going, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> They didn't. It, it didn't happen. Well, of course, it's a conversation because Brown was like, "Oh no, it's fine, it's cool." I'm just like, oh, "I was hit on." Okay, <laughs> that happened. That's that, that, that's cool. That's something you don't expect. Like, which thankfully you do not expect that in any other RPG where the like kids. Because then it just gets weird. You're like, mm, "This is a 14 year old." <laughs> like I don't like it, <laughs> but. Oh no! I I give it. A, I I would give it a solid nine out of ten. Of course, we'll never give anything ten out. Of, actually, no. I'm gonna say eight point five out of ten because now I think I'm like that's a that's a high number. <laughs> For what I was doing, eight point five out of ten or like eight. No, eight point five out of ten. It was really good. Like I rec- I recommend yeah, it to other people. 100%. Yeah, that sounds like it was a good <laughs> good, good experience. It was it really it really was. I was. I wasn't expecting it to be bad, but at the same time, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Like, I I think, like, hour in, not even hour in, I think, like, ten minutes in, I'm like, I'm finishing this. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I was just like, I like this. Like, especially because, like, I think the biggest thing about it was, bef- like, that was the last thing before we go on to something else. The biggest thing about it, to me, was the fact that, like, 
so much RPGs have one issue in in in, 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 in like the gameplay. It is like if you stop playing the game, you do not know how to pick it back up. It's, it's a lot of RPGs. I don't know if it's just me, but like a lot of times when you play RPG and you get used to the mechanics and then you stop playing it, there's not a lot of them that you can pick it back up. You have like oh, I have to relearn this whole thing. Like a good example against that is like Pokemon. You could stop playing Pokemon today and then two years later pick up the same Pokemon game and you know what the fuck you were doing unless you became brain dead. Like, <laughs> like it's not hard. <laughs> but like that that's something like like if you play Kingdom Hearts and you get like halfway into Kingdom Hearts and then you try to pick it up after a while, you're like, oh, I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> like I don't know how how to chain these combos. What what the fuck does goof oh god <laughs> Like, it's hard. But, like, Rune King, because of the fact that it's like, hey, you just have these moves. They're kind of self-explanatory. I could always just stop playing for a little bit and then come back. And by a little bit, I mean, like, only a week. But still, like, I could stop playing, come back, and be like, I know where I am. <laughs> it, was, it was easy to pick up, and I, I, I congratulate you for that. But, yeah, good game. I, I recommend it. It's on Steam. I think it's, like, not even 10 to 30. No. Is it thirty dollars now? I don't even know. Who knows? Steam always have some weird fucking sale, and people buy like ten games and goes, "I'll never play it." <laughs> but it's worth the game. It's worth the game. The the gameplay, uh, at least for one time. Like it, I don't think there's a lot of replay value. Which I, yeah. I always find that weird when people are like, "Oh, there's a oh, there's a lot." Do you? Is there a lot of people out there that, like, love to replay game? I love to just finish the game and call it a day. I, I never really want replay value. Like, unless it's, like, a multiplayer or something. Like, Smash Brothers, like, you, you, that, because the story is just horrible. <laughs> so, of course, you want replay value. But, like, I would be okay with just having an experience and be like, that was a thing. Move on to another thing. I don't need to keep coming back to it. Like right. that day, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's well. But it's also it's you know it's the type of game too determines you know really whether you really want to replay. It's a long RPG. Like for example, like Persona Five. Like that, I feel like that's a game where like if you play through it once, how often are you really going to go <laughs> back to it if you've beaten it? Kind of thing. Whereas Smash, like, like I don't want to go back and do this whole thing. Right, right. You're not going to want to play through the whole story all over again, unless it's just so amazing that you just have to experience it again, or you miss something, took a different path. But <laughs> moving, moving from a, a game to a movie, and this is now. Is this a movie that you are planning on watching? Oh, um. So okay, yes, I was planning to watch Don't Look Up, but no one has talked about it. So I'm like. I'm not going to be the first one to experience this. <laughs> like that's why I have not watched it. But you apparently liked it, or you you watched it. So I'm going to gauge by what you say to see if I want to ever watch this. Right, right. This, let me see if I can convince you about this movie. So uh, I had vaguely heard about it, um, and I just so happened to when I was in Dallas, so they explained at the beginning of the episode. Um, my family wanted to watch it and we were in the hotel and we were just kind of hanging out and you can, you can connect Netflix to the TV and all this and that. <gasps> so they're like, Oh, do you want to watch uh, don't look up? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And for those that don't know, it's, it's a movie with uh, Jonah Hill cap. It's got some big name actors in it. And it's kind of like a, I'd say it's like a dark comedy and it's also, a, it's like a satire on modern American like culture, the way we kind of are. Mm -hmm. um, you could almost you could almost use it as like a metaphor for how people reacted to uh, the pandemic. Like, you know, some people followed the followed the advice of you know scientists and things. Some people said, "Screw it, I don't want to do this and that." And that's kind of the vibe here because the basis of the story is there's a comet. And or an asteroid, and the asteroid just happens to, you know, the math adds up that 
it's gonna hit the earth and the 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 margin of error on the math is such that you know it's unavoidable like it will hit, like it's 99.9 percent certain it will hit the earth so you know the char- the characters of leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer, they work at a university in michigan and they're trying to warn <laughs> They're trying to warn the the White House, the president, everyone, like, you know, letting them know, like, hey, this is a big deal. But as you come to see, like, throughout the movie, you know, <laughs> the way people tend to be in human nature and, like, media and, you know, where people's attention is focused, you know, on, like, maybe the wrong things, not the right things and you know, stuff can get misconstrued and people decide to think, well, why should I believe this? And why should I buy that? And it's, it's just really funny. And the movie, it has a lot of funny moments in it because, you know, like (laughs) when, like I told Lincoln before the show, the 10 minutes in, I wasn't really feeling it. I was kind of like, eh, like this kind of the tone, like it just, I don't know why it just wasn't clicking with me, but then it just kind of, flipped for me and like i really enjoyed the movie um and uh this is i mean this isn't a spoiler but there is a post credit scene kind of like a marvel movie (laughs) and it's i like it it's hilarious like what they do at the end it plays into stuff that happened in the movie so um but yeah on the whole like i think it was better than i expected it kind of sends a message of how things are current and it's just i thought i thought it was a fun movie like if i mean if i had to get a score myself was uh, i'd say maybe maybe just an 8 out of 10 i think i think it was or 7 7.5 or 8 out of 10 in that range it was it was definitely good good to watch but, I mean, without going into too much, I'm trying to tell you as much as I can without spoiling it for you. But from what I've said so far, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, well, when he, once you said dark comedy, I was like, okay, okay, that's right. I, I don't know. I always have dark humor. It, I don't, I actually don't even know where that came from, my like of dark humor. I guess society and life. <laughs> like just growing up going... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta laugh changes. about something. <laughs> <laughs> or technically, it could just be good times. Because <laughs> what does it do those lyrics? Good times. <laughs> Living on welfare. Good times. I was like, no. <laughs> just got laid off. Good times. <laughs> like, what if like there's an extended version of that song and it's just like gets worse and worse like <laughs> good times cut my girl cheating good times <laughs> crack addiction's getting me good times crack addiction oh my god the opes the opiates um oh well randomly I actually didn't I didn't put it on 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 the list but because. Oddly enough, with the, especially with the winter vacation and constantly just being home, you're like, oh, what the fuck do I do? There's nothing on that's new. So you find yourself on Netflix and go down the dark hole that is the abyss to fight. <laughs> but, like, I watched The Fix, which three episodes in didn't realize it was a Netflix original. <laughs> Actually, was pretty good. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Oh, well, it's um, Jimmy Carr... And, like, four other comedians with him. And what they do is they pretty much say, like, oh, well, we are going to talk about this this uh, uh, event. Or not event, sorry. We're going to talk about something that's troubling society now. Or things like big issues. And, of course, have comedians talk about it. There's a person who comes in and tells us some data, which some of them are very surprising. And I did not know data was on but like certain things on that on on issues and stuff like that, and then the comedians would make up. Normally, what they're trying to do is make a funny fix to a a bad problem. Like just be like, oh, we're gonna try to make light of it because we're comedians. But at the same time, a lot of the times their their solutions actually make sense. And we're like, we probably should do this. Like, 
<laughs> which is odd and weird. Um, but like, it's actually the 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 ten episodes went by really quick, and to me, it did. And this is gonna be hard because I know people are gonna try to burn my house for saying this. But <laughs> I remember watching the Bill Nye um, Netflix show that they had where Bill Nye was talking about certain things. And I remember it being horribly boring for me. Like, I remember two episodes in, I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to ever see this ever again. Um, but this one was actually, like, the fix was very funny. And, like, they, they <laughs> these comedians literally let them their hair down sometimes and say something. I'm like, wow, okay, I didn't need to know that. <laughs> but, like, also, the issues, they, they did pick very, like, because... They even talked about the social media one, which oddly got me into a weird thought process of like, <laughs> I found it hilarious. like, art. we're going to be, I am like, oh, I thought we were going to be like weird. Our generation is going to be weird or like old people. We're going to be like, we're still going to, most of us still going to know what technology is. A lot of us are like 40 or going to be like 40 or 50 still playing video games because we played it when we were kids and we never stopped. <laughs> And, and I'm like, oh, we're going to be weird. And then I'm like, oh, wait, but the kids of the kids of now are going to be even weirder when they grow up because they grew up with social media the whole way through. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> because there was an episode where they talked about, like, is social media fucking up? Like, is, is it a bad thing? How do we fix it? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, because I, I, quit. I go on Twitter and Facebook like most of the rest of the people. But, like, I never grew up. With Twitter and Facebook. Like, Facebook wasn't even a thing for me, like, really until college. On the fact that in college, as the first day, you need to get Facebook. Like, that was the thing. Like, <laughs> like yeah. <we're, laughs> so it wasn't even me, like, actively just going for it. It was like, it has to be done. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that and Tumblr. But, like, it, it's weird that the kids are born into this where, like, there's not a kid alive that does not even have a cell phone by the time they're in kindergarten. And then they just have to live with that and, like, deal with everyone always watching their every move, every text they make, everything they do and say and think about is, like, monitored. And also that they're so, I'm going to put air quotes on this, woke. <laughs> so they constantly are, like, always looking up things and researching stuff and like f trying to find out every single dark truth that's ever been a thing while my generation and even and worse the generation before kind of just found out about things way too late <laughs> it's like christopher columbus was was a hero amongst men get to fourth grade he was horrible he gave people smallpox he never even found america you're like And kids just know this now. Like they they don't they don't find out things. <laughs> just kind of just do because <laughs> they have Google. Like everything's ready for them, and it's weird to that they have to go through that. But yeah, no, Fitz was actually a good. I think it's like eight, eight episodes. I would recommend to watch it. It's a random Netflix thing. Um, but <laughs> I don't, well, I'm not going to talk too much about it. So just a little hint, and it has to deal with the internet. I did watch Matrix. The Resurrection. Um, yeah. Wish. Eh, like, all in all, like, I think it was the problem that people. Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say, like, I don't know. How much time do we have left? To nah, we don't have enough time. <laughs> Matrix, Matrix I, we can get into the both of us because we both saw it, but. True. Oh, wait, you saw Resurrection also? Yeah, yeah, I, already, I thought I told Oh, no, I thought you, you, I thought you were like, oh, so. Oh, okay, no, if he. Okay. Oh, no, no, I watched. <laughs> I rewatched the originals and then I watched Resurrection. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, no, we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, as a preview for next episode, we'll talk about Matrix Resurrection. Probably the whole Matrix. We probably do that. The whole franchise in a whole. Because Zach saw it all, all over again. My brain kind of just always remembers. <laughs> like, it, it's, all, it's like useless facts in like the back of my head. Like, we'll use this in trivia one day. <laughs> and then somehow I'll still forget it. But I, well, yeah, I mean the thing the thing with that movie is that it was when I had originally seen it, you know, we were like thirteen. You know what I mean? So I really hadn't 
rewatch those movies in such a long time that the story, the, the original movie, I can remember better than the, the last two. Oh, yes. So right. rewatching them again, I felt like I had a totally different perspective on the whole story. And then watching Resurrections after, it made more sense to me as a, as, instead of if I watched it just cold. True. But... Yeah, so, but that'll be interesting to get into next week. Uh, our both of our experiences with that movie because yeah. it was definitely divided. I mean, some people thought it was okay, but a lot of people were like, "Oh, well, especially people that were fans of the Matrix." Too. Which I don't, I don't. Well, okay, we we're not going too into it, but there was did there was one thing I did want to ask you because you did rewatch it. Did your opinion on the second movie change at all seeing it again? Yes. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because my original opinion was that it sucked. <laughs> Dude, but like I watched it I watched it recently in like in college because it was one of those random days where you're like, huh, the first Matrix is playing on TNT. Okay. Oh, you're doing the whole trilogy? I guess we're sitting here now. <laughs> like, like, it was just one of those days and I just watched it all. Um, but yeah, like I watched the second one and I was like I can see a little bit. Like, I was just like, okay, I know this was, like, legit supposed to be part of the sequel. And it was leading up to the third one. So, like, I appreciate it a little bit more than when I first did. Because it was weird the, when it first came out. Because you thought that was it. And it was well, never a trilogy coming. No, no, no. Because when I... Well, I mean, I don't know if that's what you thought. But when it first came out and I saw it in theaters, I knew it was... Part of I knew the third movie was coming out that December. Oh, but I think the disappointment was was that it was the cliffhanger. Oh like yeah, people yeah. didn't like the cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. But when you watch it all together, there's no cliffhanger. It it, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's. It feels like oh, it's just an episode and like a show. True. Like, okay, because because it builds up to it, and then you're like, okay, now I'm gonna see right away. Whereas back then, you got that cliffhanger, and that's the end of the movie. And you're like, I have to wait like five months for the next one. <laughs> so, I mean, it to me, it mimicked how I think I felt when uh, my sister, who's a huge Harry Potter fan, wanted to see the the Deathly Hollows Part One because mm -hmm. it was it came out around her birthday, and she wanted to see it like it was like a midnight screen. So we watched the movie, but it's Part One of Two. Yep. So when that movie ends, it's kind of disappointing. Yep. Because it's the only one part. Same thing with that. When I watched the original Matrix, it was disappointing. But now that I rewatched it, I didn't feel disappointment. In fact, I was like encouraged to be like, "Oh God, I got to see the next one." So it was it was a better experience rewatching it. But well, that's good to know. Like because that was one thing I I always wanted to like know because you know that's true. Like with the second one, I didn't. Like, because I watched it all together, I was like, okay, and the next one's going to play. So I never got that whole, like, bad feeling of, like, oh, I have to wait. That's how you ended it? Do I even want to watch a third movie? And that, which is weird because I still love the third movie, and people do not agree with me. <laughs> I like the third movie. I like the whole Smith thing, and Smith became more of a character. I, well, I, I like that's, <laughs> that's the same. That's, like, the same thing that happened, like, because... Okay, so like I, I know I said the second one sucked, but like I thought at least I thought the second one was better than the third when I was a kid because the third I just like the the story and the concepts just didn't click with me uh, at the time. Yeah, like I mean the 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 obvious stuff. Yeah, like okay, they go into the matrix and they're all living in pods and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like I guess I just never like focused on it as much because I was just younger, so I didn't like care enough about the story to be like you know what i'm saying yeah i guess but, but older older me i'm like oh i'm right i'm right with the story and so my perspective on the third one also changed because i thought it was really awesome and like you know the fight scenes and stuff like that like it's it's just it's just interesting how it flips around like and i feel i think i was interested in the IP of the Matrix now than I was even back then. Well, I think because, like, back then, we, I, because we were seeing it the eyes of, like, which is weird because 
it's one of those things where like, oh, it's action, and you're like, oh, it's cool, I'm like Neo, and that's all we really got from the Matrix. Just like, oh yeah, action and 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 fighting and kung fu was like so Asian things. Uh, so like that was that was such a cool nuance to it. But like as an older like even when I watched it in college, I'm like. I fucking get the concepts that are coming. Like, that shit was, like, blowing my mind in a whole other way. I'm like, that's why I like Matrix 3. I'm like, wait, so this is a simulation that's been done over and over again? And, like, Neo is always a thing? Like, the, like, the programs just know this is going to happen? Which plays a very big role in Resurrection, which we will not talk about. <laughs> but that's the one thing I did like about, and that's the only thing before we end it, is that Resurrection gave justice to Every one of the movies. Like, I was just like, you had to know who these people were. And, like, they... And well, I, of course, because it, it is, it's a continuation of the story. So it's... You kind of have to... Oh, no, to, but, like, I meant, like, in a way of just, like... Not not in a way of, like, oh, you have to know. It. It's almost like you get rewarded. There was It was a lot of rewarding. Yeah, yeah, things like, oh, yeah, okay, you're going to see how these... And, like, because, dude, I've seen many trilogies and sequels... That they're like, okay, you remember this one plot that happened? Cool, cool, cool. We're never touching on this. Never fucking do <laughs> it. happened it over there. And we're not it's not like we remade the series or anything. No, no, no. Never happened. <laughs> Technically, what happened to Spider-Man, which we'll talk about that. That was another thing I watched, but we'll talk about that. So Zach, tell them where they can find you. Uh W Von Lewis, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr, Motion Motion Pod. Uh, Twitter, Mushroom Mush Podcast, Death, Instagram. I always mix the two up. Mm. Um, we have a YouTube t-shirt, thrillers.thrillers.com. The podcast is everywhere. So it's going to be Spotify, out of boom. There should be a new one coming out soon, um, which I'll have to talk about next next episode because I can't talk about it now because I don't even know what the website would be yet. Um, but yeah, like all the other ones, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Out of Boom, Hotcore, Corn. I always say that wrong. Um, but you can find me. Uh, I have my Twitter at Cheodor or my other one at Phantom Females. I also do have my Facebook, which is Lincoln Washington Edwards. So hit me up. Um, and with that, BFN. Bye for now. And Pork Chat. Woot. Woot. <laughs>